So this will be the first in a series of videos on command of evidence quantitative questions. In other words, the graph and table questions that you encounter on the reading and writing section of the digital SAT. And here I just want to go over what I recommend in terms of the basic approach to such questions. And the examples that I'm using here come from Resolve Test Prep, the free sample test on their website. And then in subsequent videos, I'll get into some perhaps more challenging, complicated examples. But here, again, just the basic approach. And that approach is going to consist of four steps. The first one is always going to be to read the prompt. And so in this case, it's asking which choice most effectively uses data to complete the statement. Then we're going to go over to the passage, read the passage with a focus on the variables or factors that are involved in the statement, or if it's a hypothesis or conclusion, the variables, factors involved in that conclusion. Then after that, we're going to go up with those variables in mind and read the graph or table and pick out the part or parts that are most relevant. And then once we have that in mind, go over to the answer choices. So it's going to be like this, this way, that way, and that way. And so here, let's just go ahead and get into it with this particular example. So again, our first step, data to complete the statement. We'll read the passage here. Regular exercise has been shown to have many long-term health benefits, including managing high blood pressure. Although blood pressure usually rises during the activity itself, exercise can increase cardiovascular strength which leads to lower blood pressure when the individual is resting. A student conducted a study to observe the effects of exercise on three participants' blood pressure. Okay, so in terms of variables, we can see a couple of them right here. Exercise and blood pressure. Effect of exercise on blood pressure. Okay, so the student measured each participant's systolic blood pressure five minutes before, during, and after 10 minutes of vigorous exercise on a stationary treadmill, the student was surprised to find that blank. Okay, so this is definitely important because if they're surprised to find something, that means that the findings are going to go against the expectations. So now we can go back and zero in on what those expectations would be. And I think we're going to see it here. Lower blood pressure when the individual is resting. And so if the student were not surprised, we would look for results that show that the blood pressure is lower after exercise compared to what it was before exercise. But given that the student is surprised, we want to see if for any of these participants, we actually have higher blood pressure after exercise than before exercise. So if we look at person one, it goes from 123 to 135. So that's an increase. Person two, that's also an increase. Person three, that's also an increase. Okay, so in this case, all three of them show an increase after exercise relative to before exercise. It could have been that it was just one or two of them. And in that case, we would look for an answer choice that reflected it. But here, since all three of them have a higher blood pressure after exercise, we want our answer choice to reflect that. And then along the way, we want to eliminate anything that is just not relevant. So looking at answer choice A, Two of the participants had lower blood pressure after exercise than they did during the exercise itself. So that's not relevant, right? Because we know we're comparing that to that. That means that whatever happens during the exercise, not relevant. B, nope, because that's not making the comparison between before and after. C, the participant's blood pressure after exercise was slightly elevated from their pre-exercise levels. Yes. And then just checking with D, no, nothing surprising about D. And again, the others are just not relevant. And so that connects to another point I wanted to emphasize with regard to these questions. And that is that the first, you know, most important thing is relevance. Because even though the answer choice does need to be accurate, an answer choice can be accurate, but still not relevant. So if you're just going through the answer choices and checking them against the graph to see whether they're accurate, chances are you're wasting time because it takes time to check that. Whereas if you know what you're looking for, you can zero in on it and say, ah, that's not relevant. doesn't matter whether it's accurate. I'm not going to pick it. 
Okay, so that would be our answer here. But again, we want to see how this approach works for a variety of examples. And so let's look at a second example. And so again, first step, read the prompt. So data that supports their suggestion. So read the passage with a focus on, you know, determining what their suggestion is. And again, what variables or factors are involved in that. And so lions, one of the largest and most powerful predators in the world, are known for their incredible jumping abilities. Estimating the average pouncing distance of these big cats, however, can be challenging due to various factors such as environmental conditions, prey movements, and individual differences. Biologists so-and-so have suggested that an estimate of lion pouncing distance may be influenced by the techniques used in measuring the distance. Okay, so they've suggested that an estimate of lion pouncing distance may be influenced by the techniques used in measuring the distance. So as we look here, we've got these different estimation methods. Two of them use the same method. The others use different methods. And so we have a total of three different methods. And what we want to find is evidence that, you know, if maybe if they use the same method, they come up with roughly similar estimates. And if they use different methods, they come up with uh, different estimates. And I think that's what we see here. So we see differences across the different methods. And so that's what we're going to be looking for. I should have put three there. That was our third step. That's what we want to look for when we come to step four and look at the answer choices. So A, the study by Patel and Kumar used mathematical modeling to produce the shortest estimated pouncing distances while the study by Smith used field observations to produce the longest. Okay, so a couple of things wrong with this one. I mean, one, just sort of conceptually, it's not really, I mean, it's focusing on shortest versus longest, and that's not really the same thing as, you know, different estimates resulting from different techniques. We might also notice that in this case, they are inaccurate. I mean, as I noticed, as I was looking at that shortest, and I see that those are actually the longest. So if you notice something that's blatantly inaccurate, you can use that to eliminate it as well. Uh, perhaps if it doesn't seem blatantly irrelevant, but you notice the inaccuracy, you can use that to eliminate it. But I think either way we could eliminate A. So B, we can eliminate this one regardless of whether it's accurate or not because it doesn't make any comparison between different estimation methods. C, the estimates by Johnson et al. and Williams and Hernandez were similar to each other while the estimates produced by Patel and Kumar and by Smith differed substantially from any other estimate. And here it's sort of relative. I mean, that's not a huge, huge difference, but it's different enough. And so that's going to be the correct answer. But let's just see what D says. The estimated maximum pouncing distance produced by these exceeded the estimated. I mean, let's just see. Is this even accurate? I mean, that is accurate. But again, that comes back to the idea that relevance is more important and this one doesn't really emphasize the fact that different methods yield different estimates and so we can put an x there or just cross it out so the answer would be c